What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to check out an extension from Fredo 6 that allows you to manage all of your different extensions more effectively by allowing you to create custom toolbars, access them from the top of your page, and a lot more. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So first off, big thank you to my supporters on Patreon for voting on this extension. Um, if you want to support the show, you can do that by checking out my Patreon page at the link in the notes down below. That's going to allow you to vote on the extension that I cover every week as well. But this week, my supporters on Patreon voted on Lord of the Toolbars. So Lord of the Toolbars is an extension from Fredo 6 designed to give you more control over your toolbars inside of SketchUp. So this is a free extension that you can download from the Sketchication plugin store, which I will link to in the notes down below. One other thing to note about this is make sure that when you install this, that you're also installing Libfredo, Fredo's collection of scripts, so that um, you can make sure that this is gonna load with no errors. If you don't download and install Libfredo as well, this isn't going to work. And so, what we're gonna do is we're gonna check out some of the functions contained inside of this extension. So first off, when you install this, it's gonna give you this vignette stripe at the top of the page. And so this stripe is gonna be where you can access some different things having to do with your extension. So this is going to, this is where you're gonna be able to access different things having to do with Lord of the Toolbars. Note that there is also a menu over here that you can use to help populate the things that go at the top of the page. Um, you can access that by right clicking and making sure that Lord of the Toolbars is enabled. So let's take a look at a few of the things contained inside of this extension. And so first off, let's take a look at how we can create these custom palettes up here of different tools. Like for example, I have a palette here containing Fredo's different tools from his extensions. I haven't dragged them all in here, but I've got some of them. I wanted to show you how to create those. And so first off, to create new toolbars, you're going to want to use the toolbar manager. It's going to be over here on the left-hand side of the page. So if you click on that, what that's going to do is that's basically going to show you show you icons having to do with any of the extensions that you currently have loaded inside of SketchUp. So for example, you can see how the native commands are in here. And then I've got extensions down here that are installed and enabled in SketchUp. So notice how some of these are grayed out right now. Well, you can click on the checkboxes in here to pop open the windows on your page if you want to see what's contained inside of them. You don't really need to do that because they're contained over here as well. But what you can do is you can create custom favorites that are going to go at the top of your page. So let's say, for example, that I've got some TomTom Tom tools that I want to bring in. So I'm going to go ahead and check. So let's say I wanted to create a custom palette up here of favorites that I could quickly access for TomTom's tools. So what you can do in order to do that is you can just click on the button right here for favorite manager. What that's going to allow you to do is that's going to add a palette in here, or that's going to allow you to add palettes in here that are going to contain those different tools. So you can use this to toggle those palettes on and off on your page, or you can do what I'm going to do, which is come down here and click on the new favorite button. So the new favorite button is going to allow me to add a toolbar or a palette. So in this case, we're going to call this Tom Tom. And so one thing to note about this is you can either have this display little icons like this, or you can have it show an abbreviation. So for example, you could either click in here and then select from this list of icons for those tools, or you could also just use an abbreviation. So for example, I'll call this Tom Tom right here. And let's go ahead and click on create favorite real quick, but notice how now Tom Tom shows up in the list up above. And so you can edit other things about that palette as well. For example, you can adjust if it has a keyboard shortcut. You can adjust the color of the background of the tool, as well as the size of the toolbar or the palette. So for example, let's say I wanted this to be a little bit bigger because I'm gonna have multiple tools in here. What I would do is let's say we wanted eight columns and four rows. And you can adjust the size of icons that are gonna go in here as well. This will give you a little preview of that. But I'm gonna go ahead and click on Save Changes. So now, what we've done is we've created this little palette that we can now put tools in. And so to put tools in the palette, what you're gonna do is you're just gonna drag them over from the Master Toolbar Manager. So for example, I've got Sub D loaded on my computer. 
Well, I want to bring some of the sub D tools in here. So I'm just going to drag them into this palette right here. So now I've got this palette of tools that I can easily access just by mousing over this right here. And so now I can quickly add or use any of those tools that I added. I don't have a component selected, so it's not going to let me do the subdivision. But um, what we can do is we can quickly access those tools. In addition, if you go into your favorite manager and turn this on, so you make it visible. Now we can add more tools to this. And so one of the cool things about this is as we add tools, I'm just going to drag this down a little bit, you can start editing if they're on different lines. So for example, let's say I wanted to bring in some vertex tools. tools. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to start dragging these in right here. Well, notice how this places these at the end of the line that you currently have selected in here. Well, what I want to do is I want those tools to be on a different line. So I can just right click in here and I can just click on the button for insert line break before command like this. And so what that's going to allow me to do is that's going to allow me to add a break in order to put these on a different line. And so notice how there's currently a break in between tools in the way that TomTom Tom shows his stuff in the menu. Well, if I wanted to add a little break in there so that these aren't just like aligned, I wanted a little space, you can just right click on this and click on the button for insert separator before command. And so what that's going to do is that's going to allow you to add a little separation before your command in here. So you can really control the way that these tools look in here. And so you can add, um, as far as I know, as many tools as you want into these in that manner. And then when you're done, you can just close this right here. Well, now if we close all of these things and let's say we wanted to access those tools, well, all we would have to do is just mouse over the TomTom Tom button right here. And you can use this in order to activate the tools that you want. And so you can add a number of different tool palettes in here. So if you have like a certain number of tools or something like that that you use a lot, um, you can use this to really quickly put these tools in here. So in addition, there's also the ability to search for different tools. So let's say for example, I wanted to add a flex door because um, I have flex tools installed, right? Well, previously you'd have to go to the flex tools toolbar and find the tool that you wanted and click on it. Well, let's say I wanted to add a flex door. Well, there's a button in here for the quick command finder. And so what that's going to do is that's just going to allow you to type in the name of a tool. So flex, I can find flex door in here and I can place this in here. Well, the cool thing about that is that's going to search all of the different tools on your different uh, extensions. So let's say that we wanted the, um, the loft by spline function for curve aloft, or you can just type in the value for loft and just find that really easily. And so that's gonna search all of the tools that you have enabled inside of SketchUp. So there's also a function here to go to full screen mode. And so full screen mode is gonna take away everything but your modeling space, meaning that you could come in here and you could model with shortcuts using your keyboard without having all that extra stuff in here. So you can also edit the way that that looks. So it doesn't just have to be a full screen like this. You can also right click in here and let's say that you sometimes want your extensions to show up, but other times you don't, right? So let's say we have a bunch of toolbars in here. So let's enable a bunch of these different toolbars and say that you had them at the top of your page. And so let's say you wanted to work without those toolbars. And so you can right click on this and you can click on your clean screen configuration. And what this is going to do is this is going to show you which options should be hidden when you go into clean screen mode. So you don't necessarily have to hide the toolbars on the left hand side or anything like that. You could just set this so that it only hides that top toolbar and nothing else. Or you could set it where it hides all the floating dialogues as well. But if you click on save configuration, well now what that's going to do is that's going to give me a clean screen to work in um, that still gives me access to my tools on the left and right hand side of the page. So in addition, this is also going to give you an option to see your command history. So these are going to be the most recent tools that you've used inside of SketchUp. So you can see how like the line tool, the move tool, those are all going to show up in here. So if you want to get back to an old command, you can use this history function in order to do that. So you can also, we already talked about using this to create little palettes up here. You can also use this to create custom toolbars using the master toolbar manager. So the way that you can do that 
is you can just come down here to the custom toolbar section and just create on the and just click on the button for create custom toolbar. And so in this case, let's say we wanted a organic modeling toolbar. Just hit the enter key in order to create that. Well, now you can see how that toolbar is in here and you can drag tools in here from different uh, different tools. So if you wanted more of a traditional toolbar, you could just drag these tools in here like this. And then you can just check the box and that's going to show up as an actual custom toolbar in your page instead of a palette at the top of your page. So it really just kind of depends on the way that you like to uh, edit these and work with these. So a couple other things to note. First off, if your top toolbar ever goes away, so if you can't find it anymore, you might try going into your, let's see, tools, Fredo 6 collection, Lord of the toolbars over here. And you can do the reset the vignette stripe position button right here. So if this ever does go away, you can just click on that reset button in order to get that back. Um, I will note too, I've had an issue with there's some extension that conflicts with this right now that makes it so that uh, things like the quick command finder won't pop up. I'm not sure exactly what tool that is, but um, if you ever do have that issue, try unloading some of the other extensions and uh, seeing if you can pinpoint which one's causing that issue. I think most folks probably won't have that issue, but I have a lot of extensions installed on my computer. And then finally, you can also back up your configuration as well as exporting it and importing it. So for example, if you wanted to use this on like another computer or you just wanted to save this and that's just gonna save as an LOTT file, then if you wanna bring it back in, you can just click in here and do an import and go find that file. And it's gonna allow you to import these different tools and commands and other things like that. So you can bring those in if you wanna get those from another file. This could be really good for setting this stuff up on another computer or something like that. So I will link to this extension in the notes down below. Give it a try and let me know what you think. I'd love to hear what you think in the comments down below. If you like what you're seeing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Um, you can check that link out in the notes down below. That'll give you the ability to vote on the extension that I cover on the channel every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.